Uh, I'm Jake Sun Hyun from uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I'm the uh, Chief Technologist for Earth Science Directorate at JPL. Uh, my uh, main responsibility includes uh, technology development uh, for Earth Science uh, missions and also strategic planning uh, for uh, future development needs. And also working with the industries and universities and developing uh, core capabilities for enabling uh, Earth Science missions. Can you tell us what the Decadal Survey is and what its goals are? NASA usually uh, uh, conduct a uh, uh, community-based uh, prioritized mission surveys. And they ask uh, NSF, which is National Science Foundation, to conduct these uh, uh, studies. So NRC, as a part of the NSF, has formulated a science working group headed by Barry Moore and Rick Antis to conduct a prioritized list of missions for uh, next set of uh, earth science, uh, addressing next set of earth science challenges. So that uh, from that particular science working group, they have generated a 14 recommended missions for NASA and three additional recommended missions from uh, NOAA, enabling uh, next set of uh, earth science missions. You mentioned that there are five earth observing satellites to be launched in the next two to three years by NASA. Mm -hmm. What are the key characteristics of the Earth that these missions uh, will observe to monitor climate change? Uh, these five missions are uh, pre decadal survey. So uh, some missions were based on purely scientific comp uh, 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 competition. And also some of the other missions are uh, precursors for uh, operational missions for NOAA. So from JPO uh, side, there are two missions uh, that's, been, uh, that's been in development right now. Aquarius is one of them. Uh, it's to measure the ocean salinity. Uh, the key aspect of that mission is uh, freshwater circulation and how the um, freshwater in the, uh, introduced in the uh, ocean, uh, ocean circulation uh, is uh, resulted in uh, ocean surface height and sea surface temperature. The next mission uh, that is called OCL, Ocean Carbon Observatories, it is an infrared uh, spectrometer to measure the ocean uh, CO2 fluxes in lower troposphere from 0 to 3 kilometers uh, in altitude. And it's complemented by the GOSET, which is uh, going to be also launched by Japan uh, in next September. And there are three other missions that's going to be uh, de uh, that's in development and will be launched by Goddard Space uh, Flight Center. One is the LDCM, which is the Landsat follow on mission that has a uh, visible and thermal infrared uh, uh, imaging spectrometers. And the uh, next one is called the GLORY, which is to measure the uh, aerosols um, uh, with a point uh, imaging spectrometer. And then uh, the last one is called the NPP, which is the uh, a precursor to the NPOS, and they want to try out the key uh, instrument challenges uh, through these missions. So those are the five missions. What has remote sensing been able to tell us about climate change? There have been uh, numerous uh, scientific papers and uh, government uh, uh, studies uh, conducted by government agencies and also by NSF that documented a lot of uh, uh, extreme, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, significant results uh, being produced by uh, various observations. As you know, there are currently 19 uh, observing satellites. Uh, uh, being uh, orbiting around Earth uh, on, uh, for uh, NASA, and there are a few other uh, by NOAA. And these measurements uh, cover various uh, altitude ranges, uh, various uh, physical properties in the ocean, atmosphere, uh, solid Earth, and also stratosphere uh, uh, areas, uh, observing various uh, physical phenomena, sea, earth, uh, sea level rise, uh, ocean surface temperature, ocean vector winds, uh, vegetation index, uh, emissivity of the ocean, uh, of the land surface, uh, land use, uh, freshwater circulation, you name it. In the atmospheric chemistry areas, it covers from low troposphere, mid troposphere, and stratosphere and ionosphere. Various chemical uh, uh, species are being measured by uh, 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 composition of these uh, in, uh, instrument, instrumentations. And they have a unique concept called A train that uh, um, consists of uh, seven or eight uh, different spacecraft measuring key parameters in the atmosphere, uh, aerosols, clouds, um, and atmospheric chemistry uh, uh, species to give you daily 24-7 uh, coverage uh, of these uh, uh, various uh, measurement uh, changes. 
Are there some key technologies that need to be developed in the next generation of Earth observation? Sure, in the, uh, you know, the Decatur Survey uh, recommendation uh, adds specifically address high resolution um, uh, and, and very, uh, um, very precise coverage uh, of these uh, measurements. Uh, that translates into active sensing, uh, both in the uh, radar area and also optical area, and then also very high resolution uh, imaging spectrometers. Uh, in order to uh, achieve those objectives, there's another uh, important aspect that, that the Kato survey recommend is that it is it has a, a, a it has given a bulky number in terms of what the mission should be worth. Um, you know, for instance, uh, a SANS mission, which is the uh, CO2 measurement by LIDAR, has a $450 million tag. So whatever we could do to, to enable that mission at that cost requires a lot of technology breakthrough uh, in terms of uh, laser uh, space qualifications, uh, in terms of reducing the mass, power, and volume of these instruments, are critical components in terms of um, um, meeting those uh, challenges not just uh, scientific challenges, but also cost challenges. So focal plane developments, uh, laser risk reduction uh, uh, programs, uh, active sensing uh, in terms of TI modules uh, in, and, and uh, receiver technologies, reducing mass and power uh, are the critical uh, area. One other aspect is it covers wide range of uh, wavelengths uh, in terms of detection uh, capabilities concerned. So uh, various uh, focal plane technologies can be critical uh, in enabling these capabilities. Uh, dual question here. What's being done to communicate the findings to the public and are there budgeting challenges in uh, the proposed missions from the decadal survey? I think that's the, the, the most important message that we like to send out of the uh, decadal survey is that in the past, uh, we mainly focused on observations from various uh, space assets. The, Decato, the new Decatur survey strongly recommends not only NASA conducts observations, but also address challenges in um, validation verification and then also developing uh, models uh, uh, to infuse these data products from the instruments and then also addressing decision support and societal benefits. In order for us to enable those three main objectives from the Decade Survey recommendation, we have to make not only data product, but also information product. What, what, uh, in the, the key difference between the information product and data product is that information product requires data simulations, including not only the scientific data, but also GIS type of information. In order to create these type of information, you have to address the heterogeneity of these different data products, different map resolutions, different instrument characteristics, all those different aspects has to be neutralized and normalized in order to produce a instrument, non-instrument specific data formats. And by producing these data formats and, in, and assimilating different data formats together to create an information. So we, we need to work closely with the industries such as Google, ESRI, and some of the key um, uh, uh, new technologies for infusing these various data products to generate new information is a critical area and critical challenges that we need to address. And, and NASA and JPL is working really hard uh, in partnering with these companies to, uh, to disseminate uh, our data products into more wider uh, user communities. So it's a beyond uh, scientific com uh, community. We're going to reach out to the decision support uh, community and also to the public. As far as uh, cost challenge is concerned, um, you know, earth science, climate change are a very important aspect. Um, but if you uh, look at the NASA as a whole, you know, they have other challenges like human exploration, astrophysics, uh, and, and solar systems, and solar connections. And balancing between uh, those uh, key programs is, is going to be a big challenge for NASA. Um, so once again, um, you know, our science will be given a, a particular budget, and in order to execute as many missions as possible uh, recommended by the Cato survey, we need to address, you know, reducing down the technology with uh, risks, uh, making sure that we develop key technology that's going to enable reducing mass and cost, uh, mass and volume, and power.
because those three parameters always translate into high cost of building these instruments. So if we as a whole, as a community, addressing and beating down those risks together, we can probably execute all those missions recommended by Decatur Survey with a cost that's, uh, uh, that's acceptable to our science program.